have said that under my administration, uh, we will not torture. War crimes will be prosecuted. My view is also that nobody's above the law. Is there anything, Ms. Professor, you that the president could not order to be done to a suspect if he believed it necessary for national defense? Well, first, can I, can I make clear I'm not talking about... And you don't have to make anything clear. Just answer the question, counsel. Well, we don't torture people. L let me say that again to you. We don't torture people. Okay. Come on, so, George. We don't torture people. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. We don't torture people. Waterboarding. We do not... I don't it's talk torture. about techniques and we don't torture people. I don't like torture. I'm, I'm, although defining it is, is, is going to be a nice trick. But... I mean, who's, who's in favor of it? Nobody. I was uh, aware of the program, certainly, and involved in helping get um, the, uh, uh, the process cleared. That is, the agency, in effect, came in and wanted to know what they could and couldn't do. And um, they uh, talked to me as well as others to explain what they wanted to do, and I supported it. But the decision was made, and, and I frankly supported the decision. Uh, the president instructed us that nothing we would do would be outside of our obligations, legal obligations, under the Convention Against Torture. So that's, and by the way, I didn't authorize anything. Documents show that Condoleezza Rice had more of a role in authorizing torture than she previously admitted. Secret memos declassified by the Obama administration show that Rice approved a CIA request to subject terror suspect Abu Zubaydah to waterboarding while she was the national security advisor. The treatment of the detainees in Guantanamo Bay uh, is proper, it's humane, it's appropriate, uh, and it is fully consistent with international convention. General Article 3 of the Geneva Convention, which states that people in detention, quote, shall in all circumstances be treated humanely, goes on to ban violence to life and person, in particular murder of all kinds, mutilation, cruel treatment and torture, and outrages upon personal dignity, in particular humiliating and degrading treatment. And that common Article 3 says that, you know, there will be no outrages upon human dignity. It's, 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 like, it's very vague. What does that mean? Outrages upon human dignity. is misnamed. Uh, it should not be called waterboarding. That's just the device that we use uh, and that torturers have used throughout history. It should be called the drowning torture and has been called the drowning torture in the past. If that was legal and within the law, why couldn't you do it at Guantanamo? Why'd you have to go to a secret location around Man, the world? I'm not going to talk about techniques. So is waterboarding constitutional? If it amounts to torture, it is not constitutional. I'm very disappointed in that answer. I think it is purely semantic. Sorry. And we would find it acceptable if a U.S. citizen experienced the same kind of enhanced interrogation measures. Tim, it's not torture. I would not want uh, a U.S. citizen to go through the process, but it, it is not torture, and there would be no permanent damage to that citizen. Anybody ever die in the interrogation program? No. I don't know that uh, any of these items would be considered uh, criminal. Are those humane treatments as that, that we should apply? Okay, this... The way one could... I, I imagine one could apply these things in an inhumane fashion, or one could apply them in a humane fashion. The well, general well, guy is... How could you force someone to be naked and undergo a 20-hour interrogation in humane fashion? It doesn't say naked. Humane fa See, removal of clothing. Words, uh, Mr. Removal Mr. of Chairman, clothing doesn't mean naked. Removal of clothing is different from naked. We were not, I repeat, re not told that waterboarding or any of these other enhanced interrogation methods were used. What they did tell us is that they had some um, uh, legislative council, the Office of Legislative Council uh, opinions uh, that they could be used. You said a minute ago that it was torture, waterboarding no, is torture. No, I said it's not something we should do. Okay, is it okay. torture or not? I, 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 I think it's, I can't tell you. 
CIA had never taught brutal assessment in uh, interrogation because it's counterproductive. I learned that in World War II. When the Nazis applied that kind of technique, all they got was either what they wanted to hear or the person died resisting. And you're not going to get accurate information. This government does not torture people. She said, this is Susan Crawford, who used to work for you, I understand. She right? worked in the department when I was there. Quote, detainee tortured, says U.S. official. Courtesy of Susan Crawford, the convening authority for the U.S. military commissions, she decides which cases go to the military commissions and which do not. Quote, we tortured Katani. His treatment met the legal definition of torture, and that's why I did not refer the case for prosecution. It was abusive and uncalled for and coercive, clearly coercive. So there it is, in black and white, from a Bush administration official. We tortured. She was, as I understand it, complaining about the way in which, or the, the uh, well, specifically the way in which they were administered. So uh, it's entirely possible there was a problem in terms of how one specific uh, prisoner was handled. Uh, I can't claim perfection. Do you believe that waterboarding is consistent with common Article 3 of the Geneva Conventions? No, sir, I don't. Do you believe it's humane? No, sir, I think it would go beyond that, uh, that bound. Well, that comment, the Constitution doesn't say every individual in the United States or every citizen is hereby granted or assured of the, the right to habeas. It doesn't say that. It simply says the right to habeas corpus should not, should not be suspended except by... You may be treading on your interdiction and violating common sense. Mr. Addington, it's been reported in several books in the Washington Post that you contribute to the analysis or assisted in the drafting of the August 1st 2002 interrogation memo signed by Jay Bybee. Is this correct? No. You had nothing to do with that? No, didn't say I had nothing to do with it. You asked my assistant contribution. It was reported you were asked if the president could order that a suspect's child be tortured in gruesome fashion. And you responded that, I think it depends on why the president think he thinks he needs to do that. Is that accurate? Mr. Chairman, I, I don't believe it's accurate because it took what I said out of context. So in other words, if the president deems that he's got to torture somebody, including by crushing the testicles of the person's child, there is no law that can stop that. No treaty. No, and then also no law by Congress. That's what you wrote in the August 2002 memo. I think it depends on why the president thinks he needs to do that. If it was authorized by the president, it did not violate our obligations for the defense against Russia. Well, when the president does it, that means that it is not illegal. People, in good faith, were operating with the guidance they were provided. They shouldn't be prosecuted. But what about those who devised the policy? Yeah, but those who devised the policy, he believes that they were, uh, should not be prosecuted either. This is not a time for retribution. It's a time for reflection. I don't believe that anybody is above the law. Uh, on the other hand, uh, I also have a belief that we need to look forward as, low, as opposed to look, looking backwards. Mr. President, you're wrong. You talk about America's image around the world. The president has talked a lot about that as well. What signal does it send the world if potentially people in the Bush administration has first potentially broke the law? This administration is now saying we're too busy. There's a lot on our plate, obviously. Yeah, this yeah, argument's yeah. been out there. Pulled. We're not saying that. You said we can't look back and look forward. The president also believes that uh, rather than looking backward and fighting this backward, that it's important to move our country forward. That does not protect the president and vice president, and they're the ones and the people just below them who deserve to be investigated, and they must be prosecuted if they've committed war crimes, or we will shred four treaties and at least four statutes. And the problem here is that it wouldn't make Obama an apologist. It would make him an accessory. He would be preventing the investigation of war crimes. How could he go from that and say that he's all about the rule of law? Will criminals will be punished, and it will be no defense to say, I was just following orders.